I'm Ben with BTC Sessions, and this is your lightning session brought to you by the Bitcoin 2022 conference in Miami Beach, Florida, April 6th through 9th. You can grab your tickets now at b.tc slash conference and use code BTC Sessions for 10% off. Bitcoin's market dominance is measured by taking all cryptocurrencies in existence, taking the dollar value of their market caps, and then taking Bitcoin's percentage of the total of that pie. There are, however, a few reasons why this is a poor metric to measure Bitcoin success. One of the main issues here is the lack of consistency in measurement. You are trying to measure a finite asset, Bitcoin with 21 million units, versus two infinite assets. There is no limit to the number of dollars that the Federal Reserve can create, and there is no limit to the number of cryptocurrencies that can be created by anyone. As an extreme example, it's a little bit like trying to measure the dominance of gold against all other fiat currencies, stocks, bonds, housing, anything that people place their value in, and then measuring it all in inflationary Venezuelan boulevards. If the measuring stick that you're using to get a number is infinitely growing, the numbers mean nothing. The other main issue here is how deceptive the market caps of some of these coins can be. A market cap of a cryptocurrency can be found by taking the total number of issued coins on the market and multiplying that by the last sale price for an individual token. I could create a currency with 1 billion units, sell a single coin for $1, and then claim that the market cap of my coin is $1 billion. However, reality would kick in if I went to sell a further 900 million units, there would not be enough buyers, the price, and thus the market cap would evaporate. In the long run, we may find that Bitcoin's incorruptible scarcity ends up being the perfect measuring stick for the world to ascertain value.